There are many occasions when you'll need to count up the total of uh, a number of occurrences of a number or a particular entry in a spreadsheet. And clearly doing this by hand isn't appropriate. And there is a formula which Excel provides that allows you to very easily count up the number of times something occurs. If we have a look at this spreadsheet here, we've got um, a 10 by 10 grid of the numbers between one and six randomly generated. For example, this could have been the record of 100 throws of a dice. And we've recorded the 100 throws of a dice in this uh, 10 by 10 table. Now what we want to do is to add up very quickly the total number of times the number one occurs within this table, the total number of times the number two occurs, the number three, and so on. So we want to be able to quickly identify the total number of times each of those numbers from one to six has been rolled. How do we do this? Well, it's extremely straightforward. What I'm going to do is set up a little table on the right hand side to record the number of times each of these numbers appears. So I'm going to type the number one in first of all. Um, and I want the numbers one to six listed down here so that next to it I can have the number of times that particular uh, digit occurs. But rather than typing in one, two, three, four, five, six, just simply type the number one. And then at the bottom right corner of this cell, you'll see that there's a little small black square. If I put the mouse over that black square and I right click, drag down all six cells. And then when I let go, I have this little uh, menu appear. If I choose fill series, then it'll copy a series of numbers down, adding one to each value. So I have the numbers one to six there very quickly. Uh, then I'll put a colon between that and over here, what the answer is going to be. And again, I'll just copy that colon all the way down. I didn't need to right click there because, of course, that's simply copying the cell all the way down. No changes. On the right here, I now need a formula which will look at this 10 by 10 grid and calculate how many times the number one appears in that table. So it's going to count up the number of ones in this table. So into the cell here, the formula, of course, begins with an equals. And then we have this function called count if. Now this function needs um, brackets after it. So it's count if, open up our brackets. And you can see the little tool tip appears just underneath uh, where our formula is going in. This helps because you can see the structure of the formula. You can see we've got the function word count if. We've then got brackets with two bits of information that it's expecting, the range and the criteria. The range is simply where do you want me to look? Where are all these numbers you want me to look through? Well, that's simple. The range is this table over here. So I'm going to simply click in the top left of that and drag all the way to the bottom right. So we can see we've got the range in there as cells B2 to K11. We then need a comma, and it wants the criteria. Well, in this particular row, I'm looking for all the times the number one appears. So I could simply type in the number one. But we're going to do that slightly clever, because in this column here, column M, we have the numbers one to six. And in cell M2, Two, it's slightly hidden here by the fact that we're typing our formula in, but in cell M2, the number one has been typed out. We did that a moment ago. So let's tell it that we want M2. So whatever is in M2, it's going to look for in this group of cells here and count up the number of times it happens. So we close our brackets, press enter, and there's our answer, 17. So there are 17 occurrences of the number one in this table here. Now we want that to carry on for the rest of these numbers here. But the problem is, if we simply copy or replicate this formula down, we're going to get incorrect results. And I'll show you why. I'll just copy this down once. So if I just double click this uh, formula here, you'll see where the problem is. 
It's looking for M3, that's correct, because it's the number 2 over here, but it's looking for M3, the number 2, within this cell range, B3 to K12. And you can see this blue line is showing us that it's dropped down one row. Now we wanted it to drop down one row for this number in M3, but not for the range. So I'm going to escape out of that, I'm going to delete that formula, and I'm going to double click on this formula we did to begin with, with the correct cell range. And we're going to tell the computer that this cell range here should always be the same. It should always be B2 to K11. This number here, M2, will change. So if we copy our cell formula down to each row, this is going to increase from M2 to M3 to M4 and so on. That's fine. But this is what we call an absolute cell reference. And we can do that by simply pressing the F4 key on your keyboard. And if I press F4, you'll see what happens is it puts a dollar sign before the B and a dollar sign before the 2. We're going to do the same thing with this cell reference here as well. It's an absolute cell reference. So I'm going to press F4. You can simply type in the dollar signs, but typing F4 is quicker. So this formula now is saying count up the number of times within this absolute fixed range of cells where this value occurs, M2. I press Enter. Of course, we've still got the answer 17. But if I now replicate this down to all these other cells, we're now going to get the correct value for each one of these numbers. For example, if I double click this number here, 14, we can see that the M2 has been changed to an M3. It's dropped down one cell, but the cell range is exactly the same. It's still looking in the same grid. So I press Enter and let's try this one at the bottom. Now this should be looking for this number, number 6, which is in M7. If I double click, yes it is. There's our M7. So it's worked out that we're dropping down one row at a time on this formula. And we've still got that absolute cell reference here, this grid of squares here, this grid of cells here. It hasn't dropped that down. So by using a combination of the count if tool, and using absolute cell references, we can now see the number of times each of these numbers appears. So the number 17 appears, sorry, number 1 appears 17 times, the number 4 only appears 12 times, whereas the number 6 appears 19. Uh, and obviously, if we have a large enough group of these random numbers, probably these numbers will become closer and closer together. So that's how to use countif and absolute cell references.